Welcome to another episode of Curtain Call Conversations. I am here today with probably the undisputed queen of Christmas. Yes, Debbie Isaac. You will know her as the writer of the Nativity films. And currently she has a new touring production of I Should Be So Lucky, the musical. How are you, Debbie? I'm very good, thank you. Nice to see you. Yes, Happy nice Christmas. to see you. I know. Yes, Merry Christmas. We can do that now. Um, so we'll talk about I Should Be So Lucky in a bit. I did come and see it in Manchester, as you know, and completely loved it. So we'll talk about that shortly. But can we talk about Nativity? Because I think, you know, even now, I mean, the first film came out in 2009, but even now, I think these films are still so loved. I mean, did you ever think when you wrote the first one, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that they would be the you know the massive Christmas films that they are now. Oh God, no, absolutely <laughs> not. I just thought they'd be a little a little film that might get lost or you know under the <laughs> radar really. But um, yeah, yeah, it's just amazing how people took took the film, the first film, you know, to their hearts in such a way, um, and then to have been given the opportunity to make another three, so four four yeah. nativity films um, yeah. that are on every Christmas one way or another. In, yeah. you know, on on all the channels and streamers and yeah, it just means they get a new audience every year, don't they? And and as yeah. children grow up and discover them, um, mind you, some of the children that watch the first one who are now like in their twenties still watch it every year. You know, um, lots of grown ups like them too. So it's it's yeah. just lovely and amazing. It's amazing, yeah. It is. I mean, they're just the perfect family films. I mean, we watched them all. I mean, my daughter's, <clears throat> excuse me, she's 17 now. So, you know, she still loves them, I have to say, because they're just brilliant films and they're just full of such brilliant people. I mean, do, you know, you've had Martin Freeman in the first one. I mean, you know, he's a massive star. Then David Tennant, you know, the next one. I mean, you know, did these people just instantly say yes to these films or was there any persuading to be done? I'd worked with Martin before. I made yeah. a wedding comedy called Confetti, oh, yeah. and he he was in that, and that was a stellar British cast. We had, yeah. you know, we had Martin, and we had Olivia Coleman, and we had, I mean, just just loads of brilliant British com comedy actors. So, so he knew me. So yeah, yeah. I, I I pitched him the idea, and he was he was up for doing it. Um, I mean, I use improvisation in all my work. So yeah. um, that's always a bit daunting for actors. And when I asked David Tennant, he was really interested, but he was a bit scared because he said, I just don't improv. That's just not something I particularly do. And yeah. I was like, if Martin could do it, you can do it. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually he was brilliant at it. I mean, they're both brilliant yeah. improvisers, brilliant actors. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's never, it's, it's never, really, you always have to meet them and talk to them and, persuade them it's going to yeah. be but I met David I booked into David um a couple of Christmases ago and he said his kids still watch them like yeah. and they're all growing up he's got loads of kids oh, I know but you yeah. know they're all growing up. And, and he was like yeah they love watching him in Nativity too because he's twins in that isn't he identical yes. twins yeah and they get two, two daddies <laughs> <laughs> That's so daddy brilliant daddy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so brilliant. I mean, the, I mean, the third one as well, Martin Clunes, and um, did you actually film that in New York? Yeah, we went to New York. We did. Um, we did. We went to LA for the first film. Yeah, yeah. Jennifer Hollywood, and then we of went. Course. We went for Nativity Three. We went to um, New York for a bit, and N Nativity Two, unfortunately, was just Wales. Although it was beautiful, and I love <laughs> Wales, but it, yeah. <laughs> we didn't get to go to stateside for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we filmed some of the interiors here, but all the exteriors were, were New York, so it was very, very exciting, very cold, very cold. Yeah, I mean, it looked cold on the screen. I mean, what's it like taking a, a production to a place like that? I mean, the, the admin for that must be massive. <laughs> well, you know, I have a really brilliant producer um, who, who makes everything seem much easier than it probably is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, of course, getting children... It's like life imitating art, getting children on a plane to America... You know, it, yeah. it, you you know, it's never easy when they're not your own. You know, because mm -hmm. you have to go through that whole system of yeah. visa and visa applications and working visa applications, and mm. it's all of that stuff. In fact, you have to go to court actually oh. and verify that you will look after the children properly. And da 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 da. Oh, wow. you know, okay. So it's quite it's quite a big deal taking children overseas. But yeah, um, 
it's so exciting for them, you know, because for many of the children, they they don't get to go to those yeah. places. Is um because as you know the children I cast are you know they're they're not you know from privileged backgrounds no, um, no and so it's brilliant you know that they get to do these sort of adventurous things um yeah it's, it's really wonderful yeah I mean you you use the same kids um for for most of the films really I suppose as they get older it doesn't perhaps work work as well but it, it's lovely that they get that opportunity to be in more than more than one and experience it. Yeah, and and we add on to them, you know. So so we, yeah, we tend to do that with the stage show as well. Try and yeah. hold on to the kids for for a couple of years, two or three years if we can. Um, then they grow in, into it. They get very experienced. Then they go off and they get kind of professional careers and yeah. have like riders in their dressing rooms and get better paid than me. <laughs> and it's all yeah. like, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, some of the kids from Nativity have done amazing things, you know, and it's wonderful, you know. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, was it always sort of your? I mean, you, did you start off as a performer yourself? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, I did start as a performer, and I think that's that's kind of why I like. I'm very actor centric as a director as well. It's like I, I, you know, obviously I care about the look of the film, and I'm very interested in that. But really, for me, it's all about the actors and their performances, and that's why I use improv as well. It's to try and make that magic a bit more. Yeah. You know. So especially with the children, you know, so they don't have to sort of deliver lines and um, mm. find their marks. They can be much freer and then you get more spontaneity. Um, yeah. so, and it's really conducive for comedy, particularly, you know, if you want funny yeah. things to happen, then then it's quite good that they don't know what's coming next, you know, so yeah. they don't learn lines or they don't necessarily know what's going to happen in the story. You can just bring a donkey into the assembly and just film their reaction. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah. get a spontaneous authentic reaction I love that yeah. yeah I mean has there any ever been any sort of improv moments where you've thought no we can't have that like we can't use that <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I mean we've had all sorts I mean also I mean when you're abseiling children down a cliff in Wales or get, taking them white water rafting or you know <laughs> yeah. doing all these mad things or flying one from the cathedral spire there oh, were lots yes. of moments where I think oh is this going to be okay you know Obviously, we we have proper health and safety checks, but, you <laughs> yeah. know, you do think at, at times, oh, my goodness, please, please, please make this so well. Um, but, yeah. yeah. No, there's been all sorts of things. And when we've had animals, you know, escape from where they're meant to be being filmed, you know, donkeys yeah. that won't move and, you know, <laughs> a, pig, a pig biting one of the actor's foot and uh, all kinds of things have happened. But it's all the fun <laughs> of the fair when you work with children and animals. That's well, they the say they well. They say never do that, but you know, <laughs> yeah, your testament no. to that the fact that it does actually work. Um, and then of course we had the the musical version, um, yes. at Birmingham Rep. I mean, it, it started there. It was there. Was it last year? Yeah, it was there I last year again. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was it started it, in twenty seventeen. Yeah, twenty seventeen yeah. was the production, and the, and it's toured all over the country over the four four seasons and it's um yeah culminated at the Aventum Apollo which is enormous you know three thousand yeah. it's done it's done brilliantly well and I think again that's testament to the films and the new audiences yeah. that keep covering it um yeah. and making it into a full-blown musical was really really exciting and you know Mr Poppy gets his songs now and his own dances yeah. And, yeah, you know, it's just, it's just lovely, really, and the audiences seem to love it. At Christmas time, it's it's a perfect alternative to Panto. Although I love Panto too, it's really yeah. nice sometimes to have a musical that's got all the ingredients of funny and touching, but isn't necessarily, you know, the same thing as you get everywhere else. So yeah, yeah. and I mean, you know, the casting for that as well. I mean, Sharon Osbourne. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, we had Sharon Osbourne, we had Danny Dyer, Danny yeah. Junior. We've had all sorts. Rylan, Rylan, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have, yeah, we have fifty six children in that production, wow. you know. Yeah. And touring fifty six children is crazy, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why I had to just go with the dog, um, in the end because I wanted the camels and the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> there was like no the producers were like no I was like no. okay what, what what animal can I have then and then crack of the yeah. dog great okay we'll take crack of the dog um, yeah so that's that's been fun yeah oh sorry just on cue somebody's rang my doorbell but my daughter will go and answer that um let's chat now about your new musical 
So I Should Be So Lucky is a jukebox musical featuring probably the best back catalogue of pop tunes ever. I am of that age where Stop Caking and Waterman was my musical upbringing. So when I heard about this, I was so intrigued as to what it would be, et cetera. But I, as I say, I came to see it and I just loved it. And I think, you know, the audience reaction is like no other with a jukebox musical because everybody knows the songs. Um, so where did this idea come from? Well, I, I was invited to, to you know, write and direct this, this the, well, a musical around right. the music of Stock Aker and Waterman. Yeah. Um, so I was asked, you know, to think up a story and, and you know, right make a show so so the the story just came from listening to all the songs again you know I like mm. you I was brought up with the songs I yeah. love the songs all the artists that that came out of the stock Aiken Waterman hit factory yeah. like Kylie like Rick Astley Banana Rama all of those Jason Donovan they're, they're just brilliant feel yeah. good poppy songs and yeah. um yeah, listening to them all, I just, um, you know, literally a story started to emerge in my head. And mm -hmm. they're all love songs, aren't they? One way yeah. or another. Yeah. They're all about love in different forms. Um, yeah. I want, I want you back, you know, or, you know, yeah. you've broken my heart or, you know, yeah, I can't exactly. get you because it's unrequited love, you know, so I'm never <laughs> going to give you up. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm so lucky to have you. And so I suppose all that dreaming and yearning and the way people feel, you yeah. know, about people and I didn't want it just to be a standard rom-com so I just mm. thought about other characters as well and um, family and the the love of you know family the love of yeah. each other the love of yourself yeah. I was just loving all its forms um yeah. and I was quite inspired by um A Midsummer Night's Dream as well which is one of my very favorite Shakespeare comedies okay. so the idea of kind of mistaken identity and comic um kind of rivalries with characters and and um, two men after the same woman mm. and all of those yeah. kind of ideas. I wanted to make it like a really contemporary comedy classic. And yeah, yeah it's been so fun. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, we saw I was there press night. So obviously the the main men, Stock Aitken and Waterman, were all there. I mean, what, you know, how, what do they think about what you've created? I mean, hopefully they've said they love it, and yeah. hopefully they, they do. <laughs> Job done, I mean, yeah. it's hard for them, isn't it? Because like their the songs are their babies, you mm. know, and I know what that's like. And then they've had to trust it, trust the songs to yeah. to other people in a new, completely different form. And yeah. they've had to hear the songs kind of reimagined. Some of the some of yeah. the songs like. You know, you never stop me from loving you, and now a ballad. You know, and and that is beautiful, that, by the way. It's beautiful yeah. in the show, isn't it? Um, yeah. But but you know, they they get very emotional. I mean, Pete Pete Waterman particularly comes a lot. Um, yeah. He's seen these ten times, oh. and every time he cries, you know, gets really <laughs> yeah. emotional, and yeah. he cries, and and it's so that's lovely. You know, I mean, just to think the legacy they've already left with their music, mm. but to have something a little bit different for them as well. And yeah. to continue that legacy it's 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 really wonderful you know and the audiences love this they come and they sing and there's a lot of controversy about singing in musical theater and i completely yeah. understand yeah. why you why not every musical works for that but yeah. for this show, somehow by some kind of magic it does work and mm. it's fine when audience sing along with the songs and mm. the cast love it and the audience love it and it's it's really good fun yeah, I mean, specific, you know, specifically right at the end when we're all encouraged to get up and dance and sing. I mean, the songs just sound as good as ever as back, you know, as as they did in the eighties, nineties. They just sound brilliant, and the way that you have reworked some of the songs um, are fantastic. And and Kayla, who does sing, "You'll Never Stop Me from Loving You," what a star she is. Um, yeah. I thought that was really touching <laughs> moment, actually. Um, I mean, yeah. when it came to casting this, I mean, you have um, obviously connections with a, a fair few of the cast that have been in your films, such as Jamie um, and Scott, of course, who was in the um, Christmas at Mistletoe Farm, which was a lovely film as well. So do you, you know, are, are they sort of already in your head that you want them on the show? <laughs> Yeah, some of them are. I mean, you know, when you meet uh, certain actors that just have what you, what, you know, the things that I love, which is mm. like relatability, they don't necessarily look like actors. They look mm. like real people. They've got yeah. real character. Yeah. And they're all very talented singers, actors, dancers, whatever. <coughs> and particularly 
com- comedic yeah. you know and that's the thing it's quite hard sometimes to find you can find very skilled people in musical theatre but sometimes those comedy bones those funny bones yeah they're, they're rarer you know yeah. so I tend to be attracted and drawn to people that have natural funny bones um, yeah. as well as all these other characteristics and yeah. and I'm very committed to trying to get um, companies together that are very diverse and very inclusive and representing people mm. in the audience so you know, it's a class thing. It's a it's um, a plus size thing. <coughs> Excuse me, in all sorts of ways, an age thing. You know, yeah. so I love being multi generational. I love children to grannies being in the yeah. cast as well as in the audience, so that everyone can find themselves, or a lot yeah. of people can find themselves and relate. So, yeah. the, so the people like Scott and Jamie are just brilliant on so many levels. You know, yeah. Gemma, Gemma to there's just. They like they do become a, like a family, you know, mm-hmm. of players. It's a bit like having your own repertory company, but yeah. um, not. We can't always all do things together, but we try yeah. because yeah. you know <laughs> that's my dog now. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, he's obviously <laughs> wants he's a treat. Or... Yeah. <laughs> it's because it's just because I have some work done in the house and it's a stranger has come uh. in. Oh, okay. Exactly what mine would do. Um, <laughs> but going back to the show, obviously, you know, it's out on a big tour. Um, do you attend many venues? I I do actually. I I I attend as many as I can, and yeah, um, yeah, I tend to go for at least for a couple of nights to most of the shows. Um, yeah. Obviously, some are further away than others, so I haven't yeah. been able to attend this week because it's in Plymouth this week, and I'm in, yeah. I'm in the Midlands, and yeah. the train's been funny, so I haven't managed yeah. to do that. But um, next week I'll be up in Leeds, and last week I was in Cardiff, yeah. uh, and obviously prior to that was in Manchester. So yeah, I keep going because well, one reason is because I absolutely love listening yeah. to the audiences and mm. just sort of seeing how different it is in different places. But yeah. also, um, it's to keep morale up with the company because you know it's a long tour. Seven months it is. is a long time on the road, and I think they need to feel like they're, you know, they've they've got that investment from me, yeah. and um, and also just because I really love it, I actually I actually really do enjoy it, you know, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it gives you that feel good feeling, doesn't it? And and in a way that becomes a bit addictive, you mm-hmm. know, you want to feel happy and buzzy and yeah. It's, the audiences are loving it. I'm loving it too. And it does become addictive. And th- th- there are people that come to all shows, I know, several times to see yeah. the show. Yeah. And we've got an increasing number of those people now who are touring around the country to see it again and again. Yeah. Um, it's 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 a bit wild, but it's really good fun. <laughs> you sort of find comfort in that, you know, and other people that share your sensibility about what theatre can do do it sort of empowers you in a warm and fuzzy way yeah makes you feel makes you feel better yeah I mean if you get that feeling coming out of a show which I did um especially with with your show there right? you know you just you just do want to go and see it again because you want to get involved in that happiness again because you know we all need exactly. that at the moment especially um so exactly. for a show like yours to be out and about especially this time of year just to lift the mood I think you've done a, a fantastic job well, well, thank you, but you know, as you know, it's a it's a massive collaboration. But it's but it's yeah. a wonderful it's a wonderful thing to to know that audiences are feeling uplifted, as you say, mm. at these these times, which are very challenging for us all. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, you ticked all the boxes for me with this one. As I say, I was really excited when the announcement came out, and and now I've seen it. I'll see it again in Birmingham next year, Yay. just for a bit more yeah. joy. Um, right. why not? So. What's next, Debbie? I mean, you must be very busy. I know. Are we having another nativity? Well, we might. We might be actually. <laughs> I mean, we. Might, I mean, the show. The show will come back hopefully next year. Um, yeah, oh, brilliant. And, yeah, and there are there are lots of projects flying around at the minute. But you know, nativity was such a special place in my heart, and I can't yeah. quite let it go. So it yeah. may come back in a new form. Um, so we'll we'll see. I'm not allowed to say anything at the minute anyway, no, but. Uh, I I am it never it never leaves me because I just love the world and I love the children and yeah yeah chaos <laughs> yeah I can imagine it is pretty chaotic but you give so many children just the joy of theatre for one as you know some of them might not experience it as you say you don't get you know stage kids um 
stage yeah. school kids. It's just yeah. normal, normal kids who yeah. just really love performing. I think that's brilliant. I love that. Yeah. So yeah. I shall pop on the slide, all the details, the next slide for the tour. I hope the rest of it goes really well. Thank you for having a chat with me today. I really Thank appreciate you. it. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank Thanks, you. Debbie. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.